Hey everyone, I'm Chris and this is Simply Classic. And today we're bringing you the Simply Classic Clutch version two. So before we get started, I wanna take you on a little inspiration journey, just to kind of let you know how I got from where I started with last week's clutch to where I am today. We have some Italian leathers that are stamped. And what that means is that the, um, the makers actually stamped a pattern into the leather. So the leather has grooves and, and things like that. And those leathers are, they don't behave as, I guess you should say as well as some other leathers as far as turning it right sides together, turning um, and top stitching. So, I wanted to make sure that on these leathers, we did wrong sides together and then edge coated the edge. So in kind of searching for inspiration, I had in mind that I wanted to do an envelope clutch at some point. And the envelope clutches that I saw were maybe a little bit boring. Hey, Cheryl, I'm glad you're here. Good to see ya. Good for you to be here. I can't see you. You can see me. Yay. Okay. So anyway, the envelopes clutches that I, that I saw were maybe a little boring. They look, look like an envelope. So I tried to make a clutch that um, I kind of did an experiment and did one with round edges instead of a pointed edge. And, eh, you know, it, it still didn't excite me. So I thought about asymmetry and I'm not a very, um, I'm a very symmetric person, I guess you could say. If things aren't exactly symmetrical, it drives me crazy. So the idea of asymmetry kind of had me going a little bit. Um, but I want to show you some photos. We're going to go through these and you can kind of see my journey to get to the clutch that we did today. So I see Barb is here. Hey, Barb. Uh, Nidia, I hope I'm saying that right, Nidia. And Lisa. Laney, I know you kind of go by both. Hello, everyone. So let's look at this first photo. So this is a Alexis guitar clutch, and it is really beautiful. I love the hardware on it, although it's it's a big piece of hardware, but it's still really pretty hardware. I like the shape of it, even though it's asymmetric, it's just a, a beautiful clutch. And then I saw the model holding it. And, and you can see in this photo how large it is. It's really a big clutch. I, I felt like even as beautiful as it was, maybe it wasn't super functional. And even though you know, it, it's pretty, we, we want something that we can use, maybe transition from every day to evening. So that's kind of where my journey started. Then I found this clutch here. This is Elisabetta Franchi, and it's kind of similar to the first one we looked at, but smaller. You still have that hardware on the flap. The flap is pointed asymmetric. It all looks great. Now the sides on this, and I don't have a side view, but it's actually got, it's more like a, a, a bag or a purse where it's got a, maybe one or two inch width to it. And, you know, I knew we didn't really want to do that today, but I thought, well, this is getting a little bit closer. Isn't it gorgeous? It is just beautiful. So in continuing on my search, I found this here. Now, believe it or not, this is a Dior clutch. It is used, I found it at one of those used sites, and it is $702 for this clutch. And it's kind of plain. I mean, it's, it's pretty, but it's, I don't know, it seemed a little plain to me. But it was getting closer to what I thought was more of an everyday type could be used every day, right? Could you be turned into a crossbody and you could use it regularly. So moving on one more, I found this and I thought that is spot on. 
It's got a little bit of interest with that lizard on the flat. It can easily be turned into a crossbody. You can see they added a crossbody strap to it. You stick the crossbody strap on the inside or you remove it and it can be an evening clutch. So you can use it um, in many different ways. You can see the sides are sewn together. So there's no width to the bag. It's just a you know, simple clutch pattern. So with having said all that, that's what led me to today's clutch. So first, let me say hello, Becky. We have Vicki from Denver. Sheila is here. Elaine got her leather yesterday. Hooray. All right. So let's move on. So let me show you this week's clutch. So this is what I came up with. This is um, a fairly simple, fairly basic clutch, right? But we have these gorgeous lizard imprinted leathers. And I did a bunch of different embellishments on these clutches, you'll see. This one, I added a zipper tassel, which would be an excellent evening bag. I also decided to add a zipper on the back because I felt like you needed somewhere to put your phone, but you didn't wanna to have to constantly be going in and out of the bag to get what you need. And here's my phone. You can see my phone fits in there, no problem. Now I have a iPhone, I don't know, seven maybe. You know, a, I know there's some that are a little bit larger than this, but mine fits. Mine fits okay. And then when you open it up, you do have a couple of snaps on here, magnetic snaps. And when you open this up, you have inside, let's see if you can see that, it's kind of hard, but you do have the same uh, credit card slot that we did last week. We just added that in here. So you could definitely take this, put your license, put a credit card, add your phone, maybe um, you know a couple other essentials, lipstick, whatever you may need, and you have got yourself a wonderful evening clutch and it snaps back down, okay? Easy enough. Now, this easily could be turned into a crossbody, and the way I would do that is I would take a piece of um, maybe leather or something, and you could just sew a piece of it right on here before you sew the bag together and put a couple D-rings on, and you could either do a wristlet or you could add a chain strap to it um, and turn it into an evening bag instead of an evening clutch because a clutch by definition is something you hold in your hand okay so here is um we have it in black now the kit is not going to i'm going to show you some with some embellishments the kit's not going to come with the embellishments because we tried to keep the kit price as reasonable as possible and we didn't want to charge you for a concho if you don't want a concho. So I'm sure you all have a lot of hardware in your stash that you could use to embellish this clutch. Um, and if you would like, obviously, to add some of those things that I show you today, we have them available on the website. But we have the black. And then we have this really cool gray. And what I did on this one was just add a longer zipper pull. The next one we have is white. And I know white is a little difficult for a bag, but here's my thought on this one. I added one of our um, one of our conchos on here. Is it's getting to be wedding season. And wouldn't this be an awesome bag for bride and bridesmaids? And then you could do the lining in the color of whatever the wedding is, you know, the theme color. This one's gonna come with this, it's called Lilas color, it's kind of like a lavender color, but that's something that they could have, you know, use over and over and over, and I think it would have been great. I mean, it just would be great for a bride. And what I did on this one was I put my logo on the back because I did not want it competing with this beautiful concho. So the conchos we have come in black and white, and we have a turquoise with nickel, a brushed nickel finish. So um, any of those would go great on here. Okay, so this is just for inspiration 
Again, the poncho will not be included in your kit, but you could certainly get that if you'd like to. Then we have this turquoise, and this is basically what your kit one will look like. You'll have um, just a, a reg, you know, regular zipper pull, um, no, no embellishments. You'll be able to embellish it the way you like. And this is a unbelievably awesome spring color. I just love this. And it's actually looking a lot greener on camera than it is. It's really more of a turquoise color. It's got a lot of blue in it. Looking at this, it's not that green. It's more of a sea foam or, or turquoise color. Okay. And then we have, and the one we're going to sew today is this. Originally, I was calling it periwinkle last week. But when I went to open up the um, packet of leather, it said on there, light lavender. So I thought, okay, well, we'll, we'll call it light lavender. So this is going to be light lavender. So we're going to do this one today. And before we move on, I want to show you a couple other pictures. Yeah, the contrasting zippers are really cool. And you can see I did some with contrasting and some without. Like the white is um, an actually a white zipper tape with the nickel. And then this one here has got a contrast. The colorful ones have contrast. And then the grays. The gray has gray, the black has black. And I did a couple different things with um, the logo. So whatever your logo tag is, this is a great place for it. And then also up in this corner here is a great place for it. Or even in the back like I did with the white, if you'd rather do it that way. I mean, you've just got a lot of choices with this. Okay, let me move on and show you a couple more photos. Hey, Roxanne. Okay, this photo here, let me see if I can get to it, hold on. Okay, I want to show you this. This is a Chanel bag. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is look at the stitching on this bag. It almost looks crooked, right? It doesn't look straight. I can promise you it's straight, but what it is is the imprint on these leathers your thread falls into the groove of the imprint. And you can see it even did for the professionals for Chanel. So I don't recommend a contrasting thread for this. I recommend that you use the sit as close as to the same color as possible because you are gonna see your stitches if you use something different and you will, they're gonna look crooked even though they're not. The first time I, I sewed with it, I looked at it and thought, what in the world? But then I realized what was happening. Okay, I have one more photo to show you, and that is this. Now, this is a Chanel bag. This is a um, one of the sites that you can buy used bags on. And when I was looking for envelope clutch, this is what came up. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, we actually have this leather and what I thought was really interesting is I would have put the tan that you see on the sides there. I would have put that in the middle, but they used it down the, they used the black down the middle. They put the tan on the sides. So when I did the clutch, I followed this. So here is that version. Okay. So on this kit, you're actually going to get zippers a little bit different because I didn't really have any zippers in stock that I thought looked really great with it. If you have black zippers with bronze teeth, you probably do okay with that. Um, but I ended up going with a solid black zipper. So if you get this kit, you're actually going to get two YKK zippers. They're double ended, meaning they're closed at both ends. And all you need to do is cut off that end. And it'll basically turn into a regular kind of zipper by the yard type deal. And then you use it just like you're going to, you know, use this here. Um, but I just really thought that the zippers look much better in black than anything else. Okay. So a couple things about the pattern I want to tell you. So this 
you will if you buy a kit you're going to get the leather you need you will get the lining and you'll get hardware the hardware includes zippers zipper poles two magnetic snaps and a zipper end you also get the actual copies of the pattern pieces the pattern's not written yet okay I just am trying to get the leather into your hands as quickly as possible. We're going to work on writing the pattern. We'll get it to the testers. So testers that are on right now, I'll be calling you shortly. Um, and, and then once that's done, we'll release it and you'll be able to buy it at that point. But if you get a kit, you're going to get the pattern pieces. When you get the pattern pieces, you're going to have a piece that you have to tape together, okay? And it's gonna look like this. And a couple things I wanna tell you about this. When you lay this on your main leather, okay? You're gonna see here, here's the leather I cut out. And you have a piece of Decaville light in the middle. It doesn't go all the way from end to end, it's just in the middle. You, the um, measurement for that is 13 inches. And you want to keep it way out of your seam allowances. Um, you have a pattern piece for that. You're going to, first of all, you're going to lay your leather so you see the face of your leather. You see you lay your leather right side up. Then you want to make sure you lay your pattern right side up on top of your leather and cut it out. When you get to your lining, you're going to lay your lining right side up, but make sure you put your pattern piece right side down on the lining. Otherwise, it's gonna all be backwards, okay? So replay that again if you need to hear it one more time. And then the other thing is that when you, you're gonna fuse your Decoville light on the leather and then put your leather face down and put the pattern piece face up, and then go ahead and cut out your um, slot for your pocket. And if you do it that way, then you will have the bag with the point in the, on, the right, on the right side of the bag. If you don't, you're gonna have it on the left side of the bag, okay? I don't really think there's a wrong and right way to. You know, for this, um, I think you can do it however you want, but I think that you know, in the photos we saw, they it was facing this way, so it's probably more quote unquote the right way, even though I don't know if there is a right or wrong, but just remember that, okay? So, when you cut this out, you're going to do leather face down, pattern face up, okay? Any questions on any of that? I know that was. A lot of information in a short period of time. And of course, you can go back and replay. Okay, if you have any, don't hesitate to ask. So, in addition to the zipper cutout, we also have some snap indications on the pattern. You want to go ahead and mark those accordingly. So let me go ahead and get my pen here. And they're gonna be on the opposite side of where your zipper is. Okay. And that's gonna be one of the first things we do. We wanna go ahead and put the snaps in. So let me show you, your snaps are not gonna be lined up. See how they're not in, in line with each other? And they're that way because this side is longer. Okay, makes sense? One other thing I'm gonna tell you about this white. If you decide to get white, don't use a heat press on it. Um, for whatever reason, the heat press didn't like it as much. The others were fine on the heat press, but I don't know if it's because there's no dye in it, there's no color, it didn't do well. So it, when you put your Decoville on there, just use your iron, use some protection, 
and just kind of lightly, just enough to get that deco bill to stick, okay? All right, so now we have our marks for our snaps. So let's go ahead and put those on. So I'm gonna cut a couple pieces here. Let me mark where my holes go. Two of them are going to go on the Decoville and two are off the Decoville. So the two that are off the Decoville, I'm going to add little pieces of Decoville heavy behind them so that they don't pull through. It gives a little extra stability. Okay. So let me just go ahead and cut. And one more. So we have two sets of snaps. Now, just a reminder, I am using a leather needle. I went down in size on the leather needle this time. I'm actually using a 9014 on that because it was leaving a little bit too big of holes in this leather. It was just a little bit different because it had that printed leather. It, it just it acted different. <laughs> Lack of a better word. I'm going to turn this around and let's go ahead and put these in. Now you're going to put your male part on the upper portions. So let me see if I can find my holes. Glasses. Just kind of push these through. All right. There we go. See it now. And then I'm going to put a little piece of Decoville on the back of this. And I'm going to put a washer. <laughs> and I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited to bring you this stuff. I can promise y'all. We have so many beautiful leathers that this would be really good in. And for those of you who bought hives from me, purple crackle and gray crackle would be a great option for this. Also the Chanel black crock would be a great option. And we have a we had a pink Chanel, or excuse me, a pink Balenciaga croc. It was a fairly large hide. We had a couple of them. Um, I think I'm going to turn those into kits as well so that you have an opportunity to use some of that. So just keep checking back on the website and looking for the different kits because we're trying to get as many up as possible, as quickly as possible. Tomorrow we have the Julie releasing, which is formerly the BD, BD, DB, sorry, as in Judy and Burke, DB Pocket Tote. And that is, um, we have a couple of kits already up for that. And then the video and the pattern will be available tomorrow. Usually once I bend these back, I take them over and hammer them just to get them down good. All right, so we have our two male, let's put our females on here. Those will go down here at the bottom. And because we have Decoville on here already, I'm not going to add another piece. I'll just keep this as it is. Okay. 
Leather is denser than faux leather, so sometimes it takes a little bit to get these in. I try not to make the holes too large. There we go. Okay, put the backs on. Yes, Lainey's a tester, and she made a really cute Julie. Really cute. Amazing. All of my testers do a fabulous job, and none of this is possible without them. So everybody needs to take a minute to thank them because they're fantastic. All right, here we go. We got it. Okay, so that's what we have. So the next step is going to be to put the zipper together for the zipper pocket. And we're going to do that just like we do every other zipper pocket. You're going to have a piece of zipper that comes in your kit and you want to cut off a piece that's as big as your pocket. And of course I give you the pattern piece for your pocket and then the rest is going to be for the top. So we'll set this aside. We're going to put the right side of the zipper pocket against the wrong side of the zipper. Burn that so I don't have fraying. And we're going to stitch this on. So before I do that, I'm going to move the camera down so that you can see, hopefully, better this week. Try to put it in a place you can see both the sewing and what I'm doing all at the same time. Okay, so hold on just a second. Let me go ahead and move that for you. you can see I know it's a little dark let me see if I can move my light a little bit closer Maybe that will help okay so we're just going to again put the wrong side of the zipper on the right side of the pocket and we're going to sew this on Now I am using my zipper foot for this so I can get right up against my zipper teeth. <laughs> Camera angle is good. Okay, great. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, so now we're going to fold this back so that our seam allowance is going against the back of our pocket and our zipper tape is nice and flat and we're going to top stitch. I'm working on a folding table and um, it's bouncing a little, so sorry if you're getting a little movement there. Okay, so we have that nice and flat. So we're going to take the other side of our zipper pocket, put it against the wrong side of our zipper, and we're going to stitch that. And then we're 
going to do the same thing with the seam allowance. I'm just going to open this up. And we're going to top stitch right here. zipper pull on so we don't want to forget that And now we're going to put some double-sided tape on this so we can put it in our hole. And my double-sided tape is right here. All right, y'all. Right here somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> it underneath here so I have more room. <laughs> oh, Lord. Does everybody else lose things in their sewing room that are right in front of them? I do. So I'm using the eighth of an inch less sticky double-sided tape and I've linked that um, here on YouTube. I've linked that already in the description so that you can go ahead and Grab it. I get it from a sign company off Amazon. All right, so we're going to peel this back and center it in the hole. Now I want my zipper pull going to the left, so I'm going to make sure I have that appropriately. Get this centered in there. Hey, Deb from Tennessee. Are you going to sell magical in Nashville? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to move my needle as needed. I'm also going to increase my stitch length for sewing on the leather to 3.5. So 3.5 stitch length and I'm going to move my needle all the way over to the right so I can top stitch as close as possible around this uh, rectangle here. Once again, I'm using uh, embroidery thread in my top, um, my top thread, and I'm using just a regular uh, Guterman, I think it is. Let's see which one I got. I think this is the Guterman. No, um, this is the Mettler. So Mettler is actually, I talk about Amon Thread, A-M-A-N-N, -N, and they are part of that group. So this color is 
A6651. Nope, sorry, that's wrong. Color is 3331. So if you have a Joann's, Michael's, your local quilt shop, somebody by you that carries this thread, that matches this color really well. I'm going to pull these threads through to the back so I can tie them off. Make sure my pull is out of the way. Now I'm going to start and stop in the same hole. these off. And this thread is 100% polyester. You do not want to use cotton thread when sewing with leather. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to stick to either a, a nylon or a um, polyester thread. All right, Deb. Well, I'll see you in Tennessee then. We are excited. We're gearing up for it. We got a lot going on behind the scenes, a lot. <laughs> um, so we are getting ready and excited. We're going to have lots of kits there. We're going to have some leather hides there. We're going to have our linen linings, hardware, pretty much everything that you can think of we will have. Everything that we carry, that is. All right, because this is a polyester, I can singe it, so I'm going to do that. It will melt. And then we're just going to take the top part of this pocket and bring it down to the bottom. And whenever you do your pockets this way, you're always going to have extra at the bottom. It is exciting. We also have our shop that we're working on. Um, we've got tomorrow they're putting insulation in and hopefully next week we'll have a wall, walls and ceilings. Um, so that's moving along. Get a few more clips. And I'm going to cut my extra off here. Okay, now when you sew this, you really want to try to get it as close as you can because we don't want any extra here. We don't want that to get anywhere close to our seam allowance. So I'm going to stitch as close as I can and then I'm going to make sure I cut this off. So therefore, I'm going to move my needle all the way to the left so that it'll get nice and close. Okay, and here we go. Now, this machine does not like double-sided tape. I'm probably going to get stuck right here on the tape. Yep. There we go. So I'm just going to stitch down. We're going to turn and come this way. And then we're going to come back up this side. Oh, 
Now it looks like I could actually get closer. I'm going to back up just a little bit because I want to make sure I get as close as I can to the edge of the zipper teeth here, or the edge of the zipper that we sewed. Have our zipper in. So I'm going to cut this extra off. I'm going to burn my edge of my zipper so it doesn't fray. Do the same thing on this side. zipper in. So I think I'm going to put my tag down below over here this time. So let me go ahead and do that before I forget. I'm really bad at that, about forgetting to put that in. So I'm just going to mark with my pen. Roxanne says, always lose things in my sewing room. I'm glad I'm not the only one. It can be right in front of me and I cannot see it. It is horrible. I actually have little clips tied, usually tied to this machine so that I um, don't lose them. Right, let's get this off. Let's stick this in. If you um you keep seeing me reach for these, these are just like jewelry pliers. They don't have any ridges on the inside of these and they really work well for like if you want to squish a seam or if you need some help with pulling through um, either a needle or something like that. Just trying to make sure this is laying flat. Okay, I'm going to put some one inch double sided tape get rid of this pattern piece, on the back of everything just to kind of help hold it. I find the glue on that helps the hardware kind of stay in place. So I always have one inch on hand. Put it over all these little pieces here.
Okay, cut these threads. And our exterior's done. So if you, like I said, have embellishments you wanna add, you kind of fold this in half, fold this down, and kind of see where you might wanna put those. You know, something could go here. I mean, it's just, it's just so pretty. So as I mentioned about making it a crossbody, what I would do is right above where this decoville comes in, I would take and sew either um, a couple of D-rings in, or you could sew a long piece of leather here and fold it under and put D-rings on each side. And then that would be where you clip your chain to so that when you fold this over, essentially the strap is coming out from underneath this fold. Okay, makes sense. Yes, Deb, I do that all the time. She said, great tip on putting double-sided tape on the back of hardware. You can use, ma uh, not masking tape, you can use duct tape as well. Either one, but I like the double-sided tape. Okay, your lining is just one big piece. Of course, you're not going to cut your zipper pocket opening in your lining. You're not gonna put any snaps on your lining. It's just one large piece. It is a little bit narrower than the main piece. So if you look at your pattern piece, you will see that there's indications on here. You're going to cut on this line for your main, and you're going to cut a quarter of an inch in for the lining on both sides. Okay, so you have that there, and you have two lines there as well. And that's just so that when we sew this wrong size together, we don't have the lining peeking out. So I want to make sure I did do that, which I did. And you're going to fold this in half and you're going to find the center. I made little notches already in the center. I'm going to fold, fold it this way. And I'm just going to kind of put a crease down here at the bottom instead of drawing the line. Close this. And Here's our credit card, little credit card pocket. I drew a line down the center and I'm gonna put some eighth of an inch double-sided tape on here, the less sticky kind, and we're gonna sew this on. And again, if you got last week's pattern, it's basically exactly the same thing. It fits usually more than two credit cards you got a little bit of room, so you could put as much as you need in here. All right, so we're gonna peel the backing off of this. And I put it about an inch and a half up from the bottom. Okay, between an inch and a half and two inches is where I put it. <laughs> Ruler here, Let's see. Yeah, about an inch and a half. So tell me who has sewn with some of this leather? And what have you run into, if anything? Um, are you sewing it on your domestic machine? Are you sewing it on your industrial machine? And how is it going? I know a lot of you have gotten it. You've emailed me and, and told me that you really like it, but have you actually sewn with it yet? I know that um, Janice has, because she's posted some pictures. She's got a Roseanne about halfway made in the lavender. It's really pretty. So I'm going to center that. And now we're going to stitch down one side, cross up the middle, and around the other side. Get this on. I'm going to move my needle over to the right to get that done. Cheryl, you haven't sewn with it yet. Okay. Anybody else out there that bought some? And what have you found? I am going to back stitch on this one because you're going to be in and out of this quite a bit with credit cards and licenses and that type of thing. Do 
one more stitch here. Now, as I mentioned last week, my machine has a little tacking feature. I'm just going to click that button and let that tack in place at the corners. It's going to get a little extra stability. If you don't have that, no problem. You don't need it. It's just trying to use the features that my machine has. Okay, I'm going to tack. So, Lenny, you've made a clutch with the aged purple, and it is a dream. Ooh. How many ounces is this leather? This is a 0.8 millimeter leather, which is about a one ounce. It's really thin. Now, um, Lisa, what kind of machine are you? did you sew that aged leather with? Do you have a domestic or do you have an industrial? And then what kind of machine if it's you know, in, in uh, domestic. So Elaine says, I have, haven't, um, you, she hasn't sewn with it yet, but you did a sample of quilting, which, which went really well. Very good, yes. Good, good, good. Yeah, it quilts like a dream. stitch okay Deb not yet I did a sample bag because you didn't want to ruin the leather okay makes sense so Lainey I have both but so the clutch on a, my Janome QCP 8900 so is that that's a domestic right I think that's a domestic C8900 QPC. Okay. Yes, it's a domestic quilt machine. Great. Wow, we would love to see it. You need to post it on the Facebook group. It is amazing how this leather sews. You just need to have the right, right stuff. Okay. So there's our credit card holder. And you can fit two cards in there or license or whatever it may, whatever you want to carry. The threads. Okay, so Deb, uh, Lady says she'll do that tomorrow. Good. Deb, um, now that you've made your bag in the faux to kind of practice with it, you need to go ahead and try the leather. because that's kind of what I'm trying to do is to get you all more comfortable with it. I want you to sew with it. And typically, just like anything else, the better quality of product you have, the better end result you're gonna get. And so you should get an amazing clutch. This is amazing stuff. Okay, we're gonna take our eighth of an inch double-sided tape and we're going to put it on the wrong side of the short side of the lining and the main. Deb, I will definitely do that. Okay, good. And then we want to see how you do. We want to see it. Okay. 
it's not a bad idea to do that, to try um, just kind of, I mean, even when I test bags, a lot of times I'll do that also with a, something I have laying around, a scrap or something, kind of work out the kinks and then I go to the good stuff. Okay, on the lining, and only on the lining, we are going to remove the backing of this tape. Now this is eighth of an inch double-sided tape. You can mark, you can draw a line a quarter of an inch from this side. I'm just gonna kind of use the tape as a guide and just barely flip this over. And we're just using that tape to hold it down. Okay, so we're just, just a little bit, not much. Essentially, we're, we're folding it an eighth of an inch. Brenda, I'm worried the industrial will ruin the hot pink leather for the clutch. I don't think it's going to. I sewed, I'm more comfortable on my industrial, right? So I'm going to go there before I use my domestic all the time. However, I'm using the domestic, obviously, because I want to show you all you can. This one was sewed with, a, with the industrial. This one was sewed with the industrial. This one was sewed with the industrial and the black. On the last week's, let me get those. So I sewed this one on the industrial and this one. So the only thing, the difference, let me show you the difference here. I don't know if you can, gosh, I'm not sure you can see that. The stitches, you can see the stitches a little better on the one that I sewed on the industrial. The stitches are a little more defined than the one with the domestic. And this is a dark color and I know it's hard to see. This is that dark turquoise, but I don't think it's gonna ruin it. You're gonna be okay. I'm assuming you have a walking foot. The only thing I would caution you on, it, I used a um, 19 needle on mine on my domestic, excuse me, on my industrial. And I used Tech 70 thread, 6.9, that I got from Sunny Sew Machines. The, the thing that um, would maybe, if, if you just gotta watch it, that might ruin it is, you know, sometimes you're, if you have a walking foot, it will grab, like if you're going downhill, on a seam. So basically you have bulk in the back, no bulk in the front. That walking foot, the only thing it can grab is that back area. And so what it does is it keeps grabbing it over and over and over and it'll tear it up. So just watch out for that and put that extra piece of leather behind. Um, if you feel like it, you might be approaching an area like that. That would be the only thing I caution you on. Caution you on. Everything else I think you'd be okay. So we're going to put double-sided tape on the back of the main piece as well. But we're not going to fold this over. We're actually going to put this right on top of the zipper. If I can find the end. There it is. Okay, we're not gonna do anything with this. We're just gonna leave this be for just a minute. The other thing we're going to do is measure in three quarters of an inch on each side. And that's going to be where our zipper placement is. Okay, three 
three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. Now that we have that marked, we're just going to set this aside. So um, Lise was saying that her experience with the leather is that it was less difficult to work with than vinyl. That's interesting because it's softer and um, it's just easier to work with. So that's good to hear. Good to know. I think so too, but... Okay, from here, we're gonna take this zipper. Now, I'm gonna tell you something about this zipper. It's much longer than what you need. However, I found that when I cut it shorter, and I don't know if you can see this. See that little indentation right there? That's the zipper. So, the end of the zipper, because I thought, well, I don't need it very long, and I just cut it super short, and I couldn't get it to do to lay down right and so it's just kind of seeming to form a bump there where if you leave it longer like in this bag it's longer you will see that you can stick it well that's not true that's not longer hold on i think in this one it's longer yeah You can stick it way down in the corner here. It's way down in this corner. You see how long that is? And I got an end on this one. And it goes, it goes all the way down, and then it doesn't create that bump. Okay? So don't cut your zipper, even though it's much bigger than what you need. What we give you in the kit, leave it the length that it is. So you're going to cut, of course, the amount off you need for your back and then just leave this long. So we're going to do the old zipper, right angle zipper thing here. We're going to pinch our zipper and just create a little right angle with it. Hi, Wendy from Western Australia. Wow. Chris, your hands down the best instructor. Love your attention to detail. It's not a race. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, Wendy. Very much. And let me just say this, too, on kits and things that we sell on the website. I know that I don't have um, foreign or overseas shipping on there, but if you are interested in something, email me directly. Tell me what you want and give me your address and I will calculate the shipping for you and let you know what it is ahead of time. And then you can kind of decide from there if you want to do it or not, because I know shipping can be super outrageous and I don't want to put, you know, some large amount on there that isn't, it isn't going to be or vice versa. I don't want to, you know, obviously get stuck with a lot of extra shipping costs. So I think that's the most fair way to do it. So just email me and actually I'm working with somebody out of England right now and hopefully um, she can get a few things. It wasn't that bad. These kits ship in envelopes, so the shipping is pretty reasonable. Okay, so we have our little right angle thing going on here. You'll see me do that a hundred times before. You're just pinching it at a 45 degree angle. I'm just gonna stitch and hold this down. And whenever I do that, I always put the zipper tape to the back. It seems to work a little bit better on the machine. I'm gonna put my needle in to hold it down. And you can hand stitch this instead of stitching it on your machine if you would like. What time is it in Australia, Wendy? It's got to be 
going to be, what, six to eight hours ahead of us? my needle out. I do sometimes stitch over my needles when I'm using my industrial machine, but I don't do it on my domestic. Okay. From here, we are actually going to pull our zipper apart. It's be much easier to do this if your zipper is apart. And on your zipper, if you ever analyze a zipper, which I don't know how many people do that, but you know, I guess the sewists we probably do. You're going to see that the zipper has lines on it and the lines are kind of where the tape is stitched together. And I use those lines to help me line up the bag on this tape. So it just kind of is a guide and um, just makes it a little bit easier to do this next part. So I want to make sure that the pull when I close is going to be on the short side. Okay, you don't want your pull on the long side, you want it on the short side. So I'm going to line up my teeth. With the short side here, I'm going to make sure that the teeth that are that is angled in is right up against that three quarter of an inch mark. Okay, I don't want it beyond I want it lined up exactly with that three quarters. So I'm going to pull the backing off this tape. Oops, we have two pieces on this one. And I'm going to line that right up. And then I'm just going to kind of use that line on the zipper. Make sure it all looks even. Now on the other side where we have our three quarter inch mark, we're going to take the zipper tape and I'm going to fold it to the back. So we want to do the 45 degree angle, but you're just going to kind of fold it to the back like this and pull it off until the teeth are right at that mark, that, that three quarter inch mark. Okay. And when it reaches right there, I'm going to put a clip. Oh, it's 8 a.m. Oh, wow. So you're, you're like 12 hours ahead of us. Yeah, shipping, shipping can be crazy. Okay, so from the back, you see how you have that right angle right there? That's what we want. And then in the front, you see the three quarter inch mark is right there and that teeth are right up against it. Because what we want is when we're done, we're gonna stick the rest of the zipper tape down in that hole right there. We don't want this to be hanging out, right? We don't want, even though it has a zipper end on it, to have that hanging out on this bag would not be very attractive. Because this is more of a, you know, classy handbag um, or, or classy uh, clutch that you're, you maybe an evening bag of some kind. So I just want to make sure that lines up good. Okay, so we're going to just um, from here, we're put our lining on. So get your lining. And we're going to put one more row of double-sided tape, and I'm going to put it just below the fold here. And we're going to butt this right up on the wrong side. And 
use the lines on the zipper tape again to kind of hold it all in place or to line it all up. Now, remember, your, your lining is about half inch less in width than your main bag, your main part of your bag. Okay, so you see here how you got some on this side, you have some on this side, both sides, and that's okay. That's what you want. And now we're just going to stitch from the right side and just top stitch this on. I still have my needle over to the right. And I am going to do a back stitch here. get to my teeth, I'm probably going to need my hump jumper. Let's see how it goes. Put the lining down just a little bit. This is a place where if you're using an industrial machine, you want to protect because you're going from a higher spot with your teeth here to a lower spot and that foot that walking foot might grab it and tear up the leather a little bit okay so i think you can see that's in purple because i have a purple backing I caught it on the back we have it on the front and we just remove this now if you missed it on the back just do a second line of stitching. Just come down a little bit further and just do one more line. And a couple of my bags, I did that. I just did two lines and it looks great. So no worries. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Let's take our zipper, Let's line it up on our main bag first. Do I lengthen the stitch length when I top stitch the zipper? I do not because I already have it lengthened to 3.5. So I'm just using that throughout the whole bag, the 3.5. And on my industrial, I'm really bad about, I don't do that. Usually I just keep my industrial. I have a Conso 206 RB5. It goes from one to 10. I leave it on about six all the time. I don't really turn it back and forth. All right, I'm gonna turn this over so I can line up my zipper teeth. So the zipper teeth are gonna go right against that three quarter of an inch mark. Lay it down. And then on this side now, I'm going to just take this tape and just turn it to a, to a right angle to the back up to the three quarter inch mark. Put a clip. Do I ever double stitch my bags? Um, I did a few of these. I did two stitches on there instead of one. If you're talking about on the inside, I do sometimes, you know, there's this theory that if you stitch twice, if you, you stitch at the seam allowance and then you stitch an eighth of an inch in from that, that your bag won't pull, you won't see the stitches. I've never been able to get that to work. It doesn't work for me. I've tried it and sometimes it still happens. So if there's a seam that I think is going to get a lot of, um, pressure on it, you know, there's just the bag tend is going to tend to um, 
like maybe in, in the corners of a bottom or something, I might stitch twice, but it's more for strength than anything else. Okay, so from here, we wanna go ahead and put our double-sided tape on the back of this. Juanita, did that answer your question? Is that what you were asking? I think it was. Now, when you go to put this on, you're gonna to have to pull it just a little bit because now your lining is a little bit shorter than your bag and that's okay. Because when we fold this in half, it's gonna, that lining is gonna kind of be taken up and it'll fit perfect. So just kind of pull it to make sure that you get it lined up properly. And if it doesn't lay flat, which you see mine doesn't, See, I'm getting kind of a bubble here on this side. That's okay. All right, we're going to top stitch this on. Make sure my zipper is pointing in the right direction here, but I've got that 45 degree angle going. side is top stitch and ready to go. I've got the back. Everything was caught there. I've got my little tail going up. So all we have to do now is to put this wrong sides together. I'm going to clip the top. Let's clip our zippers to get them out of the way. We do not want to sew those by accident. So I'm going to match my tops up. And then you want to kind of press down on your bag and make sure that everything else lines up well. You don't want your bag to be cattywampus. We can trim these seams because, you know, when you cut this, it's not going to be exactly right. And I've had to trim mine and that's not a problem. And so if you need to one of your sides isn't matching up, what hangs over quite a bit, just to get it to line up, it's okay. It's better to get lined up properly here and we can trim and fix it on the sides. So let's just clip. And when we sew this, we're going to capture our, our lining and we'll be closing up our lining at the same time. So before I sew, I'm just going to kind of make sure it all looks like it's going to be okay. And you, I can see over here, this edge is not matching up. That's okay. We'll trim it. We're done. Okay, I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to stitch down. Now for this, I'm going to switch over to my regular foot. And for me, that regular foot is this Teflon foot. 
Sometimes your machines will come with these and it's just basically a um, non-silver foot. I mean, you can see that this leather was moving on this foot, no problem. Um, but I tend to use this foot pretty much as my quote unquote regular foot when I'm not using my zipper foot. I just want to make sure that when I stitch this, I'm going to be stitching at about, it's going to be about um, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You don't want to go right up to your zipper teeth. You want to leave yourself a little bit of room, especially over here on this side, because we need to stick our zipper tail down in there. So I'm going to be sewing essentially halfway between the zipper teeth and the edge of the bag, which is going to be uh, anywhere between three eighths to a half inch. OK, because remember, when we did our teeth, when we marked our teeth, it was three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to kind of help you see exactly where we need to go with this. So I'm going to put my needle back in the middle. And then we're going to stitch down. Now I'm going to need right here, I can promise you, my pump jumper because I'm going up a hill. So let me get the hump jumper just right here. Stick that underneath. And my hump jumper isn't even big enough. You see, it's coming right out. So I'm going to use my little piece of leather that I use when I do my industrial work. And I'm just gonna kind of fold this up and make myself a hump jumper. All right, works good. Go forward and back. And you may have to lift your project a little bit because you've got a zipper back here, you have snaps, you have all kinds of things kind of pulling on it, and you don't want that to cause the back to kind of go crooked. So um, you're going to see I'm going to lift up on this just to make sure my ends stay fairly straight here. I'm going to unzip my zipper. It's kind of getting in the way. One side is done. We're going to do the other side and then we're going to trim it. And the last thing that we do is to base coat and edge coat, which I won't do on camera, but I have a couple here that I've done that with and we'll, we'll look at it. So I'm going to flip this over, make sure my teeth are out of the way. And let's go ahead and stitch down. I've got my snaps under here and a lot of bulk, so I'm going to definitely be holding this up as I sew.
So there we have it. So as you see, using a matching thread, you can't even see the stitches. And that's, that's what you want with this. I'm going to take my scissors. Now you can use, try to use a rotary cutter with this, but if you take a ruler and you try to stick it on here and put this on, you see you have your snaps and all your hardware in the way. In the back, you have your zippers in the way, so it doesn't lay flat. So I found that just a good pair of scissors does the trick. So just go ahead and trim it down to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you wanted to do a second line of stitching here, you could certainly do that just to give it a little extra strength. And what's, what this is gonna do is line those edges up exactly so that we can edge coat and base coat them. They'll be nice and even. Looks like I went off here. Let me fix that. Did it again. These aren't my best scissors. I'm going to go get my good scissors for the other side. All right, much better. Very good. So let's put our zipper pull on. We'll put our zipper end on. We'll be done. Hi, Lou. Run in late. That's okay. You can watch the replay. We're almost done. We're glad to have you, glad you joined us. Let's see if I can get this on without the... So I'm gonna zipper it up, make sure it matches up okay, which it does. And then I'm just going to take the tail and push it through this hole to tuck it in. And then I'll put the end on. So you wanna make sure you leave yourself enough room and you don't stitch too close to your zipper. Okay, and that finishes it off nice and neat. And then we'll just take this out go ahead and put our zipper end on. Which I don't think I brought over here with me. Yes, I did. So I like to fold it in, put a little clip to hold it for me while I get it in. And I'm just taking a little 
screw and get that screwed in. So this is a really easy, quick and easy bag. Again, I think for special event, like a wedding, something like that, it would be amazing. Be great for a bride and all of her bridesmaids. Or for yourself. You can show off your Italian leather clutch. Okay, then we'll just snap those. And the leather will um, kind of form to this too as time goes on. It'll conform to it. Okay, and there is our clutch. Pretty cool. So from here, you want to edge coat and uh, the, the sides. And to do that, I don't know if you can see it on this one. You see how those look white right now? That's my base coat. So I usually put two to three layers of base coat on. You're going to sand in between. I do have a video on how to edge coat. And then once you're through with that, you will go ahead and add your color on. This one already has color. I just happen to have a seafoam color. Isn't that odd? And I usually put one to two layers of paint on. Now, you're going to treat this, because this is a chrome tanned leather, you're going to treat it just like faux. You're going to put base coat, you're going to put a paint on. If you had a veg tan, that's a totally different creature, and it would be a totally different thing. On this bag here, I actually used a black stitching for the top to put the zipper on. I edge coated right above the zipper before I attached the zipper because the back of the leather was like a brown color and I wanted to see black here. And then when I did the sides, I changed my thread color from black to tan, sewed the sides so that you couldn't see any black stitching. And then when I edge coated, I actually edge coated with a tan color instead of black. So those little details, those little things that you put into it will definitely make a difference in the bag. It will make a difference in the, I mean, just in the whole appearance of it. So it's totally up to you how you want to do it. Again, it is your bag. And that's the most exciting thing about sewing is we get to do whatever we want. So again, these kits are on the site. I'll probably be adding more. We have, like I said, a great paint crocodile that I'll add. So check regularly. And until next time, everybody, happy sewing. <laughs>